Hi there, Z here. Today's video, we're going to be covering a topic called the wedding seating problem. And what this is, if you ever had a wedding to plan for, um, or you ever helped anyone out in planning a wedding, uh, you normally have a situation where you can't just put um, your guests anywhere. You typically have to think about who needs to be kept together at the same table. And uh, unfortunately, there will also be cases where you want to invite certain people, but you know they don't get along, so you want to keep them in separate tables. Now, uh, the challenge then is how to get a seating arrangement uh, where you try and keep everybody happy. So this video is accompanied by a much longer uh, medium article where I go through quite a lot of detail. Um, but in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, high-level overview of uh, two approaches that um, I've taken. And uh, the full code is going to be available in a GitHub uh, repository that I'll put up in the article and this video later. So um, the first approach that we're going to be taking using an Excel spreadsheet that has uh, some formulas and a couple of macros in it. So uh, these names are completely made up. Uh, I got them from a website called uh, Fake Name Generator. So don't worry, these are they're not real people. Um, so you key in the guest list here. And then the next step is uh, you select your table size. Uh, here it's eight people per table. And uh, you key in the names of uh, who need to be together. And how this works is uh, each of these three columns are the names of people you need to keep uh, together uh, row-wise. So basically, this uh, person and this person need to be together. Uh, this person and this person need to be apart. And you can have more than one. So. Uh, this person needs to be together with these two people. Now, uh, those of you who uh, may have noticed that I did repeat it here because uh, you might be saying, well, do I need to do this? So it's consistent. Um, you actually don't because uh, the way the formulas work out, it sort of takes care of itself. So um, you need to just follow the steps here where uh, we've done step one. Now, step two is uh, you notice that uh, we've got 30 guests but for table sizes of eight, you're going to have two blank seats. Now, uh, the way the um, calculation works, you need to actually fill up the blank seats. So you just click this and it'll take care of uh, adding the seats for you. And uh, you set the number of iterations that you want to try out. And uh, it's going to uh, run it in another tab where um, essentially what uh, the macro is doing is it's randomly generating some um, table assignments and it's checking to see uh, for each table uh, whether or not the conditions that you specified in the earlier tab have been met. So it's just sort of uh, not using any um, clever technique. This is very much a naive brute force approach where it's just bashing its way through as many permutations as it can and you can see it's racking up uh, up to 199, uh, 200 to try and look for uh, zero um, violations. So small number good because uh, the smaller the number the less number of violations there are. So uh, it takes a little bit of time uh, the bigger the entries get. So I'm just going to pause the video. So you can see it took about 431 dice rolls uh, to eventually get to an answer that uh, meets the conditions. So you can very quickly see these two people are in the same table. Uh, this person and this person are at separate tables because uh, he's probably yep, he's here down here. And this person uh, and this person are in the same table. So uh, it's a bit of a hit and miss because uh, it doesn't always uh, get it right so you may have to run it multiple times uh, but it does occasionally work especially um, if the numbers are sort of small so pushing this to see how far this can go um, this is an updated input sheet where instead of only 30 people uh, I've now got uh, 90, 92 people uh, number of conditions have also increased uh, and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, maybe this time we'll, well, we'll keep it at a thousand. That's fine. And uh, we're just going to run it again. So let's do that. Uh, 
okay so it's doing its thing so what i'm going to do is probably hit pause and come back uh, either when it's found a solution or when it reaches a uh, thousand so unfortunately uh, it didn't manage to find a solution with a thousand um, that's okay we weren't expecting it to anyway so um, i've created some additional um, buttons that allow you to do things for like example uh, manually step through the iterations because um, you might get lucky uh, like in this case uh, more people are together you still have two that are apart and uh, the flexibility is also there for uh, users who want to sort of uh, maybe customize um, um, the final result where um, you can actually go from uh, auto mode to manual mode uh, and what that does is it allows you to manually change the uh, inputs so if you want to fix something like say uh, this person uh, they are at the same table but you want to swap them out so you can uh, move um, this person to to maybe another table so maybe move him to table one so uh, spare seat one and this person will make a swap so uh, move him to table one and spare seat one becomes uh, table was it table three i think it's table three yes it was and if you click update um, you now have uh, one less error so you can do that it's a bit painful um, not so uh, easy to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how um, you can potentially improve upon this um, because there's also a button that allows you to export the data and uh, that looks like this where we've got a list where uh, this is the same information and this is the table size. I'm not going to save it because I had a copy done earlier and we're going to move it into a python script so um, we're going to do two different versions um, first one is actually just a python implementation of the what it was doing in excel uh, which you may wonder why we're bothering but uh, there's still some benefit because uh, python runs faster so to demonstrate what i mean uh, let me just do that so we've got the 96 packs uh, eight packs per table case and uh, i'm just going to do this so these are the conditions uh, should match whatever we saw a moment ago uh, and this is the relationships the 96 people uh, and we need 12 tables this is a random assignment so this is how um, python does it and we're going to generate a seed um, initial distribution for those 96 people and um, if you remember, uh, we had a thousand um, iterations earlier, but then now we're going to sort of uh, ramp it up. So this is just a demonstration of the calculation logic where uh, it's doing the same thing. It's going through for each person in the table. It's checking whether or not uh, they, this person has any conditions associated with him. And uh, for those conditions, it's checking to see whether or not uh, it's being met. Um, so instead of a thousand let's ramp it up to ten thousand um, just to sort of give you uh, an indication on speed so you can see uh, it's running ten thousand and it's already um, managed five thousand so it's easily ten times faster than whatever excel was doing um, even if i would turn off the animation uh, unfortunately it doesn't seem like it's caught a case where the score was zero um, but it does have the ability to remember uh, the best one so we have here uh, unable to find ideal solution but the best one so far was a score of three and it gives you the output and uh, you can also save the output um, into a csv uh, to review it so i'm just going to do that uh, and we can pick it up here where uh, let's just do that yep should be this one so this was uh, the output from the Python file. Uh, some of the funny symbols don't come across right, uh, but you can also back um, um, 
backload this into the Excel sheet and uh, test it out from there. Um, so three violations uh, in this particular case. Now uh, we're going to use a different approach next where instead of uh, a brute force approach, we're going to do something called simulated annealing. And uh, I've gotten the code from uh, a particular website. Uh, so I have to credit the offer, but I've made quite a number of uh, additions to the existing code. Um, and instead of randomly searching through all the permutations, uh, this version has uh, some intelligence to it where it's able to sort of um, uh, search in a way that is intelligent. Uh, and um, let me just do some of this. I'm going to import all the information across. Uh, no, I'm not going to modify the relationships for now. Uh, so let me just click through then I will talk a bit about what it's doing. So same thing here. It's uh, grabbing the information. Now, uh, where it's different now is that instead of um, just having the uh, relationships as a binary, you must be seated or you don't have to be seated, we're going to assign numbers to it. So these numbers, uh, negative numbers indicate together, positive numbers indicate apart. And uh, the uh, bigger the number, the stronger the relationship. So uh, they're defaulted at 50. Uh, you can, of course, amend it to different numbers. So I have a um, I have a cell that does that for you if you want to, but I'm not going to turn it on. And uh, by having this sort of numerical representation of the information, uh, we can do a number of things. Uh, we can check for inconsistencies in uh, how you specify your relationships. Um, and we can also view the uh, relationships uh, in a matrix where you can see this person and this person are friends, this person and this person are friends. Uh, so there, it's a symmetrical matrix. And um, because these uh, numbers, uh, the math of it works out such that you can actually take any seating arrangement. So uh, each row here represents a table and each sort of column here represents whether or not someone is sitting in that particular table. You can actually boil that all down into a score. And uh, being able to sort of boil everything down into a score is useful because now you have a different way of evaluating the goodness of a particular seating arrangement. Whereas previously in the brute force method, uh, the way we formulated it, we were sort of looking at, uh, do you meet all the criteria? But in this case, you're sort of looking at like a score for each, um, each one. So um, running it uh, using the simulated annealing method, uh, what it does is uh, this score is important because uh, the simulated annealing uses this sort of logic where Maybe it's best if uh, I just go to this. So it generates a random solution just like uh, the brute force, but uh, it looks at a neighboring solution next and it calculates the cost and it compares them. So this bit here is important because if it's better, then it sort of shifts to the new um, configuration. But if it's worse, it stays where it is uh, and it uh, tries like uh, a different uh, uh, configuration and it has this sort of quality where it's more forgiving in the beginning uh, but more stringent at the end in terms of uh, whether it will accept uh, bad solutions and by doing that it uh, avoids getting stuck at sort of a local minimum so if you imagine this chart being you know the score factor and this being uh, the different variations, uh, you can sort of get stuck in this uh, valley, but uh, the simulated annealing has the ability to sort of jump up because at the beginning, uh, you're more forgiving of uh, bad results. So even though you're sort of going up, if you're at the start, uh, it doesn't mind and uh, you get over the hum and then you start looking in a different sort of search space. So um, you can see that uh, we've uh, taken two minutes and 30 seconds to power through uh, the 
uh, all the permutations to get to the uh, final result. So um, you can see that it's got a score of negative 8, which is better than the seed value we started off uh, minus 2. And uh, if you scroll down, uh, you can export the uh, results to a CSV. You can also view uh, what is the assigned table number versus the conditions. But uh, if we just look at the output for the simulated uh, results, and we try to stick that into uh, back to the Excel file. Uh, so we'll go into... Uh, this was auto, so we'll go into the manual mode and we'll do some cut and pasting. So uh, let's go to this. We're going to take everything here and we're going to paste it in here. So let's do that now. And we're going to do the same for the conditions. So that's over here. And we're going to also do it for the um, suggested table seating. Okay, and refresh. And you see we've got a perfect solution where uh, this person and this person is sitting at the same table. Uh, this person is at some other table somewhere. Uh, this person and this person are at the same table. And so on and so forth. So yeah, so um, using simulated annealing, um, we've managed to arrive at a solution at still a, a decent amount of time, 2 minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, you know, it's not a whole day. Uh, and it's uh, performed a lot better than the brute force approach where it didn't take that long but uh, it couldn't come to a satisfactory answer because uh, the best one that it found was a score of 3 as opposed to score of 0. So um, yeah, that's uh, more or less all I had to cover. Uh, if you have time, uh, do have a look at the article because I also go beyond just these two approaches. I have a high-level overview of uh, lots of other methods uh, with uh, code that other people have written. Um, so, example, uh, this leads to a GitHub repository for something um, using a uh, CNF form. So, it's conjunctive uh, normal form uh, and an algorithm called WOXAC. Uh, I've got another one down here that uh, uses genetic algorithms written in R. So that's uh, another GitHub repository. And uh, these are different approaches uh, and they all have their own sort of uh, strengths and weaknesses and I talked a little bit around how they work um, but not to the level of detail that we covered for the um, simulator annealing and brute force. So um, Bringing this to a close, uh, hopefully I've given you uh, a feel of uh, how to tackle um, this problem on your own. Um, so the spreadsheet is going to be available in the GitHub uh, link and you can download it and uh, use it for yourself. Uh, same goes for all the Python code that you saw here. So you at least have simulated any link that you can just run right off the bat. Uh, and I'll end with an interesting story, this sort of an out-of-the-box uh, perspective. So I shared um, this draft of this article with a friend, and uh, she had this uh, funny view where she said, well, you know, it's uh, fine and good, but it looks really complex. So why can't you just let everyone sit wherever they want? Just make sure you have enough tables, because uh, people will self-organize. So uh, I guess with that, uh, it really is true that there is more than one way to solve a problem. Um, but if uh, you're keen on um, assigning people tables uh, rather than letting everyone sit freely, uh, you've got some uh, working tools. So um, till next time, thanks for watching. Bye.